Welcome to the Printed Prop Shop. Today is very special. I have designed my very first lightsaber. And with any of my designs, they go to my wife first. If she wants it. Most designs aren't really feasible to give to her. Um, but this one, this one can sit on her desk. It has it set up as the queen, which she is, my queen. I designed it in Fusion 360, along with the stand. Really, it didn't take too long. Um, if you know anything about Fusion 360 or you're just looking to get into it, this was fairly simple to do. I just needed my first design or four first measurements of how big I wanted it to be and went from there. Added little, little things to go with it. It's nothing crazy. And it was fairly simple. Yeah, I like it. Here's how I did it. So I'm just showing you the Fusion 360 um, product that I created in a 3D environment. I didn't really want to focus on the design portion because that's not what this is about, this channel. Um, here's the stand. I just, just showing in a 3D environment is all it is. So I got my finished product um, printed out anyway. And uh, it's fully in resin. Um, it did have a little bit of um, problem underneath the switch from the the support that ran up that piece and uh, it intertwined with all those little nubbies for the grip so I'll show you at the um, little later on how I fixed that so I use this uh, plastic wood and I like it out of the squeeze bottle I love it in fact it sands so much better than anything else that I use and inside the tub that you see, it just sands so much better. But they only make it in the bottles in that that style anyway that I found. Here I use a nail filer, and nail filers are great if you wanna get into 90 degree corners. Um, something sandpaper might just tear up a little bit. And you go very light. Anytime you see me sanding anything, I'm going very light on it. I'm not forcing it and just slowly going over it. And here's the stand. I just wanted to show what you can do with UV resin. Um, this is some that I had left over from another model. That's why it's dyed. Um, and I go and fill it in these gaps here because this was printed out in pieces. And I put it in my uh, curing box for about five to 10 minutes and it's good to go. And then I start sanding it. Um, sanding it is relatively simple, just like you would sand any other resin. And it's great for, for smoothing things out and uh, filling gaps when you don't really want to use like a certain filler. I've gone ahead and thrown on a uh, coat of primer and I've gone into my wet sanding here. Wet sanding is just simply uh, grabbing some water with uh, some fine sandpaper. Um, this is 600 grit and just going over it, the uh, primer that I have is filler primer. So it does fill in any kind of those dips for the most part. I did um, two coats of filler primer on here, two light coats, let me put it like that, two light coats. And uh, I just went over and sand, sanded the, the whole unit. Um, I did go out after this, after about two days, I let it dry, I always let things dry. Um, reason being is that water can sit in there and then it'll sit underneath your paint. But after that I did throw on a coat of uh, enamel spray can gold. And the gold you can see is very bright. Um, I'll actually put on a different airbrush gold to kind of dull it down, make it not so bright. But here I took some deep black airbrush paint. And I like to do this um, to go and show more depth. Um, it really pops on camera when you have that kind of depth as you saw at the beginning of the video. Um, on camera now, up close, um, you can really kind of see that overspray. And I do cover up that overspray as much as possible. Um, but overspray to me kind of shows a little bit more depth when it's on camera. And that's really what I'm going for. I'm going for on camera to show you what kind of props you would make to film. Not necessarily to have sitting on your shelf. 
if you're having it sit on your shelf, you would probably um, be very precise, you'd probably use some masking tape, even though I don't really like painting with masking tape. I like kind of blending the colors together more than anything when I'm airbrushing. But I went ahead and did the grip all black. Here I went and threw on a coat of uh, gloss clear coat. And uh, not matte, I wanted it to really pop on her uh, on her desk. I wanted it to be a, a sh really showpiece. Now that little piece that was underneath the switch that just didn't turn out very good in the print because of that support, I wanted to do something with it, but I didn't want to put in a wire because wire kind of shows, um, I don't, I'm not sure of what I'm gonna say about what a wire says. I just think it shows a little bit more handmade or you just kind of used what parts you had around. And since I think of her as a queen, she would have all this brand new parts. So there really wasn't a need to put a wire in there. And I didn't really want to go crazy with having to try to figure it out. And purple kind of shows a little bit of a dark side um, if this was um, an actual blade, I would think it would be a deep purple, but it did its job. And it's uh, just some fabric I had lying around with some hot glue to hold it down. And I will give some insight, the little ring to hold it to your belt came from a, a pair of shoelaces that I bought the other day. It just, uh, it was on the packaging. I left it silver so that uh, I, I think it gave a good contrast. And that is how I did it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, normally I don't do them as shiny. I normally like to do them in a mat. But this is uh, this is going to be on her desk, hopefully. Hopefully she keeps it there um, as more of a trophy or a display piece. So um, I enjoyed making it. And I hope you enjoyed the video of how I made it. And as always, you have the power to make a great film in your pocket. It's called a smartphone.